Okay, we're going to look at um, the poem War Correspondent. We're going to look at two sections of it um, by Kieran Carson. Uh, first is called Gallipoli. And uh, the War Correspondent is, uh, you know, uh, a reporter who's uh, watching and narrating, in a way, the war. Uh, and what we're getting is this rich, detailed description of war. Um, again, you might ne need to know some background of Gallipoli being a battle site in Turkey during the First World War, but I don't think it's necessary to really get the sense of what's trying to be communicated here. Let me try to... I don't know if I can get the whole poem on one sheet, but let's see. Okay, so to do this, to describe this place, um, uh, he uses imperative... Oh, she, I don't know, actually, Karen Carson. I think it's a she. Imperative uh, uh, verbs that command you to, in your imagination, bring a lot of things together. So, take sheds and stalls from Billingsgate. See, you could know Billingsgate is a fish market in London, but you don't need to know because we're going to be told. Glittering with scaling knives and fish. It's a real positive word uh, and a wonderful image. Scaling knives and fish. The tumble-down outhouses of English farmyards. So we're going to take stalls from a fish market, outhouses, the reek of dung and straw, and horses cantering. These are a series of attempts to tell us the place stinks, okay? And to do that, they keep giving us images, accumulating them, to really offend our nose. Take an Irish landlord's ruinous ascent state, elaborate pagodas from a Chinese delftware dish where fishes fly through shrouds and sails and yarns of leaking ballast-laden junks bound for Benares in search of bucket loads of tea as black as tin. What's interesting here is the dish has an image on it, and the image is what takes over this stanza. So on dishes, you're gonna see these things, these ships and sails and yards um, of people trying to go get tea and bring all this into this image and the dishes, all throw this into, and the, and the again, not stinks this time. Now we just get the, there's just a accumulation of detail and stuff. Take a dirty gutter from a back street in Boulogne where shops and houses teeter so their pitched roofs meet. Dirty gutter. Again, the, there's smell and there's imagery. Some chimney stacks as tall as those in Sheffield and, or Irish round towers smoking light of the fleet of British ironclad destroyers. So now we're getting places. Bring all the places as well. Bring the smells, bring the stuff, bring the places. And now we're gonna get more detail on the smells, okay? Take the garlic, oregano, tainted arcades of Bologna, Italy. Linguini twists of souks and smells of rotten meat. So we get food, rotted, rotting meat, Labyrinthine is the rifle factories of Springfield or the tenements deployed by bad employers who sit in parlors doing business, drinking powers. Then populate, now we get the next, now do the next thing. Okay, now that you've, now that you've created the place, it's like we're God creating the place with the smells and with uh, these uh, objects and now the places, now fill it, fill the place, now fill with Cypriot, Turk, Armenians, Arabs, British, French, camels, officers, sailors, sappers, miners, African slaves, Greek money changers, interpreters who do not know the lingo or the slang. All these people shove in there 
Okay, and then what I want you to do is clothing, dress them now. Dress them in turbans, shawls, fedoras, fezes, sashes, shirts, boleros, pantaloons, knickerbockers, ostrich and pink flamingo, outfits, even stranger. So it smells. Uh, we've got food, we've got places, we've got things. Now we have people, we have clothing. Go get, go ask for slaughterhouses for the troops. Now we get more food again. We need, we need meat. We need lemonade, rancid lard, which is, uh, really emphasizes the rotting, which already we had in the crowding. Um, a temporary hospital or two, a jail, a stagnant harbor, redolent with cholera. Now we see the, the rotting leads to disease and open sewers running in the streets, sickness, smell, whatever fun you might have in, in the sounds of this poem or in the accumulated details, now we're definitively in an open sewer. It is, it is hell. Let the staple diet be green cantaloupe swarming with flies, washed down with sour wine, squawks of parakeets, the music of a kithara, which is, I like the sound, but it can be very, very disconcerting. So we have, uh, you know, uh, cantaloupes, beautiful green cantaloupes, but immediately the juxtaposition with them swarming with flies, again, insects. Um, that's all you get to eat here. Uh, and then you get this poetic, O oh, landscape riddled with diamond mines of Kimberley. So we get a kind of poetic O, oh, a song, a call out to this place where opium smokers doze on the Persian rugs and spies and whores and dim lit snugs discuss the failing prowess of the Allied powers. So they're arguing politics and war. And now you get this kind of Orientalist fantasy of opium and Persian rugs. And in this place that we basically created or imagined in this poem, dogs sniff at uh, intestines beyond the stench of pulped plums and apricots that that alliteration is fantastic there. It really shows the, the, the kind of, um, the accumulated uh, detritus of fruit. Um, and from this, this rotting fruit, they, they make an alcohol. But the dogs are sniffing at intestines, that which is thrown away from the meat. And soldiers lie dead or drunk among the crushed flowers. We get this other juxtaposition, death and the natural world. And it's not clear, but are the dogs sniffing at the soldiers or at other meat? Um, they're either dead or drunk, which is interesting because it seems like both are equivalent you get a sense there's no honor here, there's no beauty, there's no real purpose to this war. This is something disgusting and pointless. And then you get the final line of this section, I have not even begun to describe Gallipoli. And it's the not even begun, begun meaning it's so much worse. But he knows that he's tried to describe it so much He's already done, he's already rammed this section with images, smells, people. And he's actually saying it's much more brutal. Much more brutal, unforgiving, and horrible than even he's begun to describe. This poem shows war at its worst as not honorable, not violent, but just an accumulation of people and things and animals and death.